Let me first clarify that this was four years ago when I was 15 on a muzzle loader's mule deer hunt in the far northeastern part of Utah. I've been frequently out in this area spreading in Summit County that cuts in and out of lower Wyoming since before I can remember, including lots of hiking, backpacking, camping, hunting, and being involved in some of my grandfather's work. I'm skeptical of things not proven by methods of science, but I don't deny all of those things. I find that it's impossible for science to know all that is out there in our vast world. My grandfather is a recently retired biologist and a former conservation officer for the state. He was a regional specialist and was in wildlife and habitat management for many years. He's done everything from habitat management programs to quite literally wrangling moose to be transplanted and even darting black bears. He has seen mountain lions, bears, birds of all kinds, small mammals, ruminants, plants, and natural phenomenon for a majority of his life. He understands so much that many people, including myself, will never be able to even imagine. He's scientific, honest, straightforward, and level-headed. He's agnostic and is not superstitious, and often used to tease a certain coworker who thinks Bigfoot, skinwalkers, and other beings exist. Other than this experience, he has never encountered an animal that he could not at least partially identify. Other than the natural, innate fear of being in close quarters with a bear, drunken and belligerent hunter, or incredibly potent tranquilizer medication, He's told me over and over he's never been terrified of an animal or experience like this. Only curious or surprised. It was late September and we were in a small camp by a lake in the high unit mountains hunting both gorse and mule deer with muzzleloaders. Camp was a small collection of men and women my grandfather had worked with over the years as a supervisor. These were people I grew up with. One of the women had shot a buck deer, injuring but not killing it immediately, and had lost chalk of it. Devastated by the thoughts of wasting the animal, she returned to camp in the afternoon upset and concerned that the deer had run into an even more secluded area of the mountain, which is hard to reach from the trail that she had shot from. A place my grandfather was familiar with because it was such a pain in the ass to get to, with lots of deadfall and steep terrain. We volunteered to go in the late afternoon to search for the deer, following a scant blood trail that she had tracked for a while before getting fatigued and intimated by the terrain. Because both my grandfather and I were in good shape and he was so familiar, it didn't seem like a big deal. Before we left, she mentioned hearing what she assumed was coyotes. This made her concerned that if the deer died, they would ruin the meat and hide before she could harvest it. We took off in the early evening, expecting to be back within an hour or two searching. We took our guns with us in case we found the animal still alive or came across another buck worth trying to harvest. It was steep in places with lots and lots of deadfall of wearing heights, making the hike slower and more tedious than we had hoped. We understood the other hunter's fatigue. She had marked the blood trail with bright orange pieces on the trees, which we followed for maybe 20 minutes and then it had got hard to track. The sun was getting close to setting at this point, and we knew getting out would be just as long as getting in. We had just about decided to stop when we found a spot near a fallen tree that looked like it had been recently bedded down in, followed with spatters of fairly fresh blood. We continued on for a little longer. When the sun had just about set and the light had faded from the trees, we removed the firing caps from our guns to make them now completely safe as it was now illegal and irresponsible to hunt in such absence of decent light. My grandfather pulled out his large mag light flashlight from his pack and I put in my headlamp to begin the hike back. About 10 minutes on the way back we started to hear movement among the trees. It was normal for animals to start moving now that the sun had got down, as animals would likely be starting to head towards clearings for water or to graze in the safety of lower light. Small and distant sounds of crunching leaves, pattering of hooves, or small bits of movement in the trees from squirrels or birds were common and expected. We did not expect the deafening, destructing sound we had heard next, which vaguely initially reminded me of a coyote howl, but by a few seconds it was unidentifiable, frightening, and human-like. It sounded with what sounded like a person screaming, but then it got louder and more intense with a screech to it. It was unlike any coyote or any animal we had ever heard. Then was the almost chittering that came in between the shrieks, and the movement of the trees became almost calculated, almost threatening. We stopped dead in our tracks, frozen as my grandfather started using the light to look around. I was far more freaked out than him at this point. He just seemed perplexed, curious, and a little baffled at what could make that sound. It sounded human but with no words, with no urge of tone of help or I'm just screaming to mess with you. We continued on after it mostly stopped and it seemed like the other and natural distant sounds had almost gone silent. I listened intently to the sound of my boots crunching with the dry aspen leaves underfoot, trying to tell myself that it was just some weird coyote with a horrible deformed larynx or something. 
maybe 20 minutes from the main trail that would lead us to the truck. We heard the chittering sound again and sounds of thumping against dead trees. Looking around with our lights maybe 12-15 feet in front of us was a large human looking thing. It was almost hunched down with long slender arms around the front of a standing aspen. The aspen of course was pale white with knots being dark brown. Whatever this thing was had skin almost as pale as the aspen. I caught a very brief glimpse of its face. It seemed round and the eyes seemed sunken. I could not tell you eye color other than a flash of reflection on the eye from my light and that its face seemed sunken and emaciated. I didn't see any fur or hair. I never felt like it looked right at me, more my grandfather. Just as before, my grandfather was almost confused and curious. For a mere couple of seconds, I caught a glimpse of it, but that was it. I looked down at the ground, holding my eyes shut, trying to imagine being safe and secure in the truck. My grandfather took a few stumbling steps backwards towards me. I heard the thing go off to our side, moving quickly and with purpose through the trees, and then drop down behind us. My grandfather turned to where it had veered off as to follow it, but he soon stopped and looked at me. I had never before and never since seen him so confused, baffled, horrified, curious, and in awe. I was crying at this point. Ugly crying, trying to muffle my shaky breath and voice, and I asked him, What was that? Over and over I asked, and he had no answer for me. He pulled his gun off his shoulder and put a cap back on the nipple of the igniter, making the gun live. He then carried it in front of his body. He pulled out another headlight to put on himself. We started walking again towards the trail as he listed off as like talking to himself as to what it wasn't. Things like, couldn't have been a deer, or an elk, or a moose, it had arms, it was hunched, it stood upright. A bear? A very sick bear. It couldn't be a bear. Was it the light? We heard the sound, the screeching human howl distantly once more before reaching the trail. We practically jogged the truck. I locked the doors immediately and sobbed. My grandfather turned on music as loud as possible to try to distract me on the way back to the camp. I was a mess when we arrived back. He went to talk with the others by the fire when he got me settled in my sleeping bag. He explained to his friends, but I don't know what all was said. The next day, everyone was extra sweet to me, trying to comfort me and saying it was probably a sick animal that looked scary in the dark. The deer the hunter shot was found the next day in the daylight, scavenged quite harshly by what I assume was coyotes. To this day, my grandfather has no clue what it was, nor what the sound was. Before and since, I've heard both coyote and many other animal sounds that never even compared to that sound. The scientists in me and in him blissfully hope and speculate it was just a deformed sick animal in scant light, but I still have no clue what this thing was, and I hope I never experience it again. <laughs>